he looked at the engine and he was amazed. He's like, wow, you really put this in this car. We're like, yeah. I was actually quite fortunate enough about one story I'll tell you. A friend of mine named Mr. Kamui Matani. This Japanese friend of mine, my brother from another mother, this guy uh, introduced me to one of the Honda developers who was there at the time of Art and Senna uh, developing the NSX when it first came out, back in the late 90s, you know. Or early, not late 90s, early 90s, sorry, excuse me. So he was down here and Kamui kept telling him about this unique accord, come and see it. Oh, that day was just the most exciting day of my life. Showing one of the chief engineers from Honda, Japan, what you can do with a normal Honda Accord. Met him, he looked at the car, and of course he does the most coolest thing ever. When you pop them, he's like, can I see the car? I was like, of course, of course, you know. He comes in, very respectful, very polite, and he was amazed when he opened the bonnet. You know the Japanese, they do all that, oh, you know, that, 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 that funny little thing, you know. So uh, he looked at the engine and he was amazed. He's like, wow, you really put this in this car. We're like, yeah. So I took him for a drive. I took him for a drive, let him feel the power and stuff. And he was amazed. And then also when I started doing the heel and toe rev matching and stuff, he was amazed I could do that as well. I was like... Yeah, I mean, we, we learned from, we, that's also something I learned from this car to master it, the whole heel and toe. It helps a lot, especially with manual cars, because it doesn't disturb the roll when you're braking and all that sort of stuff. That was a technique that took me, took me a little time to do it, but I managed to get used to it, you know. And yeah, that was something, man. I got took pictures and everything. He's like, man, we should have made an Accord Type R because of this. You know, thank you for doing something. I thank you for, for believing in the brand. Now, a question you might ask me is like, what really pushed my bug into getting into cars or into Hondas? Because my history of cars was actually all Hondas, till date even. So, back in 1996 or 97, a very good friend of mine uh, called Christoph, him and his brother Martin, they used to have a 96 Honda Civic SAR. The king of Civics back then, man. This thing was a 1.6 B16A. It had an intake on it, DC Sports ceramic quarter headers, a Remus exhaust, straight through resonated and all that sort of stuff, spoon clutch and all that. Man, that thing, when his brother took me in for a spin in that, that was it. I got the Honda bug so bad, I was like, man, I have to build me a crazy VTEC or, you know, VTEC monster, you know, one day. And Slowly down the line, it came true, you know, and uh, I thank them for that, man, because that car showed us things that you have a small capacity engine, but with the right mods and setup, you can get that car going really quick and really stable, really handles pretty good, you know. Back to the story of going off the scene. Oh, yeah. So going off the scene, I was off the scene for three years. I didn't have no car. I couldn't afford stuff. My life at the time was a bit struggling, you know. I couldn't really afford much at all, so... Um, I had my family support me here and there and stuff like that and all that stuff. And one fine day, I actually managed to save up some money. And my friend Omer Khan, this guy, he's like, man, I'm done. You know what? There is something pretty cool that's going for a very good price. Here's a picture of it. Go check it out. And it's with a guy called Bob's who works at Das, the owner of Das. Uh, and he had this car lying down for one year. He had to drive it for a year, and then he parked it for a year. So the car was parked outside his shop for a good year. I went, and went, I went to check it. And I remember in 2008, I saw this car at the Honda showroom where they used to sell it, which was the Civic Type R, the EP3, you know? And that was actually, when I saw that car, that was a dream to have one day. I was like, man, I want to own myself an actual Type R. You know, I want to just say, you know what? I did it. And uh, by luck, this car came up. So I went and checked it. It was a black Civic EP3. And I went and looked at it. It looked pri it looked beat up badly. Um, it was quite dirty, stuff like that. But it had some really cool stuff on it. That was the, that was the thing that caught me off rushing, you know. And um, 
He had an AM intake, uh, Skunk 2 headers, DC Sports Catback, a Quaif LSD, Exidy, uh, brand new clutch, overall gearbox, D2 coilover. Had quite a bit of stuff on it. But it didn't really look cosmetically wow. I looked at it first. It put me off at first. I was like, nah, I ain't gonna do it. Then I took my friend with me. We call him Mullah. When I took it for a spin, it changed my mind. I told the, I told Bowser, I was like, man, listen, you know what? Because uh, actually the car had a hit on the chassis. And it was pretty much repaired and stuff. And uh, But apparently he fixed it up and it will pass for the RTA. So I was like, you know, let me get the car checked. If it passes, I'm off you a, a value and let's go for it. Luckily, blah, 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 we did it. It passed pretty good. And I gave him an offer and he was like, you know, uh, I'd do a little bit of negotiation with that, but you know he was so kind and so generous, and uh, he gave me a good deal for the car. And I took it. So then now it's three years I have this thing, and I've just been trying to build it as well. But again, I had it for a good five six months. I put a I put a Haltech plug and play C on it. I changed the intake on it. I had it tuned by a guy called Jason Ong. Uh, he got the car tuned up and man, it opened up, man. It made, it made about 200 and, uh, 212 wheel horsepower on a rundown, beaten K20 motor. It was eating oil like crazy. It would eat like, in like a thousand kilometers, it eats like an eel of oil. It was worn out, but it still made some power. And then, you know, I tried to fix it up slowly, slowly, slowly. So eventually stuff, this car was a good luck charm. I managed to get all these cool parts for cheap for it and all that stuff, and it was coming along. And then I was changing out the intake manifold on the car to a intake manifold from the FD2R, which is known as the RRC. That's like the father of intake manifolds for the K series. Pretty big. It's 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 very expensive. First of all, I mean to get a used one, it's like three and a half grand to get one. But I was fortunate enough. A friend of mine called uh, Isam from Malaysia. He actually got me one from Malaysia, hooked me up really good, man. Thank you for that, brother. And he bought it for, he bought it in a suitcase, man, from Malaysia. And I got that in. I wanted to put that straight in, but then we noticed something pretty bad. We opened up the intake manifold, and man, when we saw the intake runners on that engine, it was black as a black hole. So you could tell, like, the blow by was bad. You know what? We were like, it went from just putting some bolt ons, then it went to overhauling the engine. And overhauling the whole car. Now that took me as well another one and a half years to do. So again, the EP3 was off the road. Again, I was out without a car. And again, things didn't go as planned in life. You know, life surprises you sometimes, man. Eventually, with time and patience and stuff, we managed to get all the car resprayed, fixed it up. And I managed to get like the Mugen front bump off it from my friend Khaled, who actually was the first owner of the car from day one. He bought the car brand new from Honda, and he gave me the whole history and background of the car. So I knew it had six, seven owners before me, and what happened to it, where did it go, what was in it, all that stuff. I knew the whole history about it. So it was a good luck charm that this car came from. And um, we rebuilt it. We rebuilt the whole engine with fresh parts, new bearings, new gaskets, new everything, man. New piston rings, the works. Got it redone, got it tuned, and... It made some jam. It made some power. You know, again, from dinos to dinos, you know, people will always say, man, yeah, this dino reads high, whatever. It was. I mean, yeah, the dino, for me, it felt it read high. It was showing like 250 wheel horsepower on a stock motor, which was a bit shocking at the time. But I wouldn't consider it the number. I wanted to see how the curve was, how the timing was, how the air fuel was, and everything. So, but man, when I drove that thing afterwards, it was fast. I even had the FD to our final drive put into the gearbox as well. I had changed the clutch on it as well. And I worked on the suspension on it. I put literally everything on the suspension on the EP has been fully done. With hard race components, I had my suspension brand that I sell, Gap Suspension. I put that on it and all the stuff. And the car started to come to life. It became scary, man. This car, this car was a beast to tame compared to the Accord. The Accord, man, I think you could drive with your eyes shut. It was so stable, so calm, how feisty this thing was. This thing was a feisty little, little, you know, little bull to hold on to. And I haven't been racing on the track for over three to four years. I was off the scene. And I was just helping people on the tracks whenever they went. 
I would just go to help her because I missed it so much, but I didn't have anything to drive. So the only way to do it, by helping others and let them become better, you know, and let them be safer while they're doing it, you know, and stuff like that. And giving some pointers, like, if you have some knowledge that you could share to somebody, again, share it, man. And, uh, but don't, don't share all your secrets, though. If you got a little secrets, well, you keep them to yourselves. But, Jenny, man, if there's something you can help somebody, man, just help them, you know. And that's my whole thing.